Hello and welcome to a new video about hydraulics. This time we are going to talk about uh, the system or the basic structure of hydraulic. Basically, hydraulic systems do consist of two parts. There's the control part and there's the working part. The control part is taking care about what needs to be done and the working part is executing this. So the working part is really where energy, where the, the work is done, yeah, the power part, yeah, and the control part is influencing this. Yeah. I'll show you what I mean. Yeah. So there is the control part. Yeah. Control part. Control part usually consists of three subparts yeah, or three items. Yeah. There is first one is the signal input, signal reading, signal input. Then there is the signal processing. Here, the decision is way what we need, what we're going to do. Yeah? So we read inputs from our outside world, see how they look like, and then we are processing them. And then, after it is decided what needs to be done next, yeah, if anything, then there is signal output, and the signal output then is somehow influencing the work part, the power part. Okay? This control part needs can be done in hydraulic, but does not need to be done in hydraulic. Okay? This control part might also be a person who is sitting in his excavator, looking at the shovel, signal input, wants to influence the shovel, processing those signals, yeah? and is controlling the hydraulics of this excavator. Yeah? Or might be electronically, might also be hydraulic yeah? control part. These are the typical steps. Input, processing, output. Always in control. Now let's have a look at the power part. In power part, in hydraulics, we for sure have a tank. Yeah? So this is the oil reservoir. It's a tank yeah? where our oil, I always say oil, fluid, our fluid is located. Okay. Just the fluid does not really work, yeah? so we need something, we need a pump. Yeah? Typical symbol for a pump is a circle, yeah? and then there is inside a little arrow. Okay? A pump by itself does nothing, so we need a coupling. And coupled to this pump is a motor. Okay, the motor is also a circle symbol yeah, with an M inside. Okay. This motor might be electrical, the usual way in stationary hydraulics, or might be a combustion engine, the usual way in, in mobile hydraulics. Yeah. So a pump is producing flow. It's the suction line here, it's the pressure line. And at the pressure line, we will build up pressure if we stop it here. So what we need is a pressure relief valve. Yeah? Pressure relief valve is a special valve which is opening and closing depending on the pressure. Yeah? So if the pressure is rising too high here, yeah, the pressure relief valve shall open to protect the system. Usually it's closed, it's going back, here's the pressure, here's the tank line, and there is a spring, it's spring-loaded, the spring can be adjusted, yeah? and here it's measuring the pressure, and if the pressure is high enough that the spring is crunched, the valve will open, okay? And with the, with the adjustment of the spring, I can adjust the pressure here. To, have, to be able to adjust it, here's an indication, pressure indicator. Okay? So here, now is my pressure line. Okay. If it's blocked, yeah, if it's blocked, then we will just bump a circle. 
Usually there's also a main switch here somewhere. Main valve, yeah, which in one position is open, like shown here, yeah, and in the other position it's closed. Yeah. So this valve usually these valves usually have two positions, they are operated by hand. So we can either open it or close it. Yeah. The main switch, let's call it, is a pay pressure line and the working line A. So here we either have power or not. Yeah. And on the other side, on the other side, we do have the working, the actuators. In my case, I will draw here a cylinder, double acting cylinder, which means we need oil for input and output. Yeah? And then we have an according valve somewhere which needs to be switched. Yeah. The typical valve in hydraulics is a 4-2 way valve. About these way valves, yeah, there is a separate video. This is how it usually looks like. Yeah. And my particular one is here spring-loaded. Yeah, so this means this is the usual position. Here is the pressure line. Here are the, the working lines, A and B. And here is the tank line. Tank line is important. And here on this side, I say it's hydraulically operated. Yeah? So if we have here no pressure, it will look like this. The pressure line is connected to the B line and the A line is connected to the tank line. So whatever is inside here can, be going, going, can go back to the tank. And whatever is inside here will be filled with the pressure. Yeah? So this will go in. The other way, if here is pressure, we go out and then the pressure is connected to A and B is connected to T and the cylinder will go out. Yeah? So this is the power switching. And if I connect now this with the P connector, I'm done. Yeah. However, here the tank line must be fed back into the tank. And if we once have gone into the into the system, here usually there is a screen inside because it's foamy and so on. Yeah, to prevent the foam from flushing over, yeah, there is some screen inside usually. So the tank line needs to be returned to the tank. Now it's a circle. Okay. Now how to control this valve? Okay? Usually the control uh, systems they are not strong enough to directly control big valves. Okay? Because if I operate here really heavy machinery, I read here a really heavy duty valve. Okay? And I can use hydraulics to control this. Yeah? So I can use a smaller valve, which can easily be operated yeah, by the contour part, and looking like this. Yeah. Here's the pressure line, here's the tank line. The tank line, I again have to go back to the tank. Okay, and the pressure line, yeah. like the spring loaded, and I will say it's hand operated. Yeah. And here the signal output has influence. Yeah. The signal output will influence this valve here. If it's pushed, pressure is coming here. The pressure is pushing this valve also to the other direction. That's it. Okay. That's it. Uh, the pressure line. Yeah. Usually those bigger valves, they are not that sensitive. The smaller valves are really sensitive about dirt. Yeah. So here might also be an inline filter inside. Yeah. Filter symbol looks like this.
so-called inline filter. Okay. Usually we do have here two pressure indicators to see if the filter is clocked or not. Yeah. If the pressure difference is too high, the filter is clocked, yeah, because then it has too much streaming resistance. That's a typical hydraulic system. Yeah. There might also be a pressure accumulator, then these things have a different meaning. Uh, we will talk about this also later. Yeah. There might not also be uh, filters inside, there might be coolers, heaters, thermometers yeah, inside. This is the typical part. There might also be uh, an offline filter. Yeah. So there's another pump maybe. Yeah. And there is a motor which will be driving this pump. Yeah. Must not necessarily be the same motor. Yeah. And there is an offline filter. And we are just pumping through this offline filter, yeah? just to keep the hydraulics clean, yeah? the liquid clean. Yeah, like I said, combustion engine or, or electrical engine pumps different type of pumps, uh, pressure relief valves important, yeah? always important, yeah? because otherwise you would maybe destroy the pump. Yeah? If this is just clogged, yeah, then the pump will start. Yeah? In best of cases, only the motor will start. Yeah? In worst of cases, the pump is gone. Uh, there are then also indicators, filling indicators, how much oil is inside. And here is the oil level somehow, and this oil level is changing yeah, depending on how much oil is out in the system and so on. Yeah. We'll talk about this this thing. Yeah. So the control part has influence on the working part. Yeah. The working part consists of, of different parts. Yeah. So there is there is the actual as this is called power part. Yeah. And there is the actual the actual working part which is this one. Yeah. This is where really the work is done. Yeah. This is the working part. And then we do have the supply part, power supply part. Yeah. This would then be this. Yeah. This with the tank. This is the power supply part. And in between, we have the energy part. Okay. So in, in here, where is a nice color? Here. In here. This is the energy part where it is controlled where the energy should go. And all those things together are the power part, yeah? controlled by the control part. That's the usual thing of, of uh, a hydraulic system. This is how this looks like. Okay? Next video we are going to talk about uh, how this control part, or how those things work together. This is now a schematic. Yeah. Typical symbols and so on. We have also covered this. Oh, there is missing. It's missing something. There is also the A line, of course, working line. We have covered this also in pneumatics. Uh, it's pretty much the same symbols. Right? 
fluid technique it's called. Uh, just the connections are named a little bit different, yeah, but the symbols are the same. And the big difference between hydraulic and uh, pneumatics is the tank line. Yeah. Pneumatics, I can simply, the waste air, it simply goes to the air. Yeah. I cannot just spill out the oil somewhere where because I don't need it. Yeah. I will fill it back into the tank. Yeah, like I said, next video, we will be then of control control systems how how we can describe what the control shall be do we yeah? and then we are going to talk about the different parts of of our hydraulic system yeah? we're going to talk about the power supply part we're going to talk about the energy part we're going to talk about the working part yeah? one by one yeah? all the elements inside yeah, for this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.